Tara? Yes. You know, we recently did an album, or not an album, uh, a uh, video about Yes. Yes. And the albums. Uh, great feedback on it. A lot of people um, think there was a point at which Yes just ceased to be what they were and became kind of um, crap, if yeah. you want of a better word. My big question is, when did Genesis become crap? Hello, welcome to this video. So this is um, going to be uh, part of a series of videos that we do. So we're going to have a look now and again at um, bands that were really good and then the point at which they became bad. Because let's face it, with our beloved genre of prog, not everything was smooth sailing all the time. Yeah. Some of these bands actually crossed into mediocre territory and sometimes uh, a little bit further than that, actually, wouldn't you say? So... Uh, now, disclaimer, people that don't agree with us, don't go into the comments and type abuse aimed at us because we couldn't, we couldn't care less. Like, the, this, you know, is the, this is the most subjective thing going... But we're also being very honest and open with you, okay? We could kind of sugarcoat all of this stuff, but we're going to be quite straight about how we feel about this. Um, uh, you know, with, with a lot of these bands, and by the way, this is the second time we've recorded this. The first time it descended <laughs> it was it, very into bad. something that could not be seen by the general public. And it wasn't just him this time, the two no, of us went mad. It was horrible, not me at all. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, with most bands you can kind of pick out that stinker of an album that suddenly they crossed the line with. Um, but uh, we found we had a bit of disagreement with our beloved Genesis. Um, and the problem is, when you really love a band, yeah. uh, and they're producing just fantastic album after fantastic album, when you get that one that you feel was just really, I sp how could you describe it? Uh, it? It just feels like almost like a personal insult when they do something that's really uh, not what they have done up to now. So anyway, the two of us couldn't agree on which was the album and Tara was a bit more unforgiving of Genesis than I was. Uh, so she's going to start the video with her uh, one. I'm going to give my response and then I'm going to mention my one and Tara's going to give her response. So off we go, Tara. So I've spoken a lot on this channel about how personal I, music is to me. And I'm sure there's a lot of you that agree. Uh, you know, it kind of coincided with things that would happen in my life and would pull me out of bad places and stuff like that and it's also linked to like core childhood memories and stuff and Genesis is one of those bands uh, when I first heard Dancing with the Moonlit Night on his uh, prog rock compilation CD um, I thought it was incredible it was like being taken off into this completely new world and from there then he, he showed me Get Him Out by Friday and I'd hear the Winkler and uh, the Department of Genetic Control and I just I thought it was fantastic I love imagination things like that and as I get older I can see how relevant it still all is as well like especially that song with the housing crisis in Ireland and stuff um, so yeah, I got into all of early Genesis. I was a huge fan of Peter Gabriel and his performances. And uh, I just, yeah, when he left, I was like, oh no. Well, obviously I wasn't around when he actually left. Like, But when I was looking into them and saw he left at a certain period, I was like, oh no. But I heard A Trick of the Tale and Wind and Mother and I thought they were fantastic, gorgeous. Still loved all the lyrics that were being used in them. Uh, obviously all the playing was beautiful and very whimsical. Um, I heard Duke then as I got into my teenage years and I thought it was 
fantastic. Um, I think I had to kind of persuade you to listen to Jim. Yeah, I was scared, like, because <laughs> I knew it was 80s. Like, um, but I love it, and I, I still reach for it all the time. Mm, it's great, Anne. So I kind of stopped there, and... <laughs> Go on. Dad was talking to me about how, like, I hear Invisible Touch on the radio here a lot. It's played here all the time, and I think it's absolutely abysmal. Mm. And I was going, hardly that's the same Genesis that did Sell in England by the Pound and Foxtrot and everything. And I said it to Dad, like, and he goes, oh, <laughs> have you heard Advocate? Have you heard of the Retreat? Oh! <laughs> I said, no, I haven't. Well, doesn't he sit me down? And he put on and then the Retreat. And straight away, I was like, okay, uh, nothing is really kind of happening, like it's not doing anything for me, do you know? Because with Genesis, I was so used to just having my mind blown and straight away being pulled off into this fantasy world, like. And with this, I found I was kind of searching for something good to happen. Um, there was no story to follow, like I wasn't hearing any characters coming into it. It just, it was very kind of um, laddie da, like mm. a whatever, mm. kind of to me. Yeah. And that makes me mad because realistically they are capable of a lot more, which they proved in the past. I mean, they're part of the big six for a reason. And when I heard this, I was just so disappointed, mm. like so disappointed. And it really just upset me. And I felt betrayed like okay, okay. you know like because like i said i take things very personally which is probably a, a downfall of mine mm. in other aspects of life but yeah i was very disappointed and i just i sat through the whole thing and i was just like that didn't really leave any impression on me mm. whatsoever mm. and then you played abacab for me and i just Wanted to gouge my eyes out. But how do you... <laughs> now, I'm, I'm going to come in now, because I think she's spoken for long enough, you know, the kids, you leave them off, and they do whatever they like. you, Jesus you know. Christ. But, uh, hang on, yeah, but you see, I'm old, I, I can have opinions, okay? So you have that, and as you rightly said, then Duke came out, right? Yeah. So, do you regard, at that point, Genesis said, um... You know, we're not making albums the way we used to. We're not kind of uh, in that canon of these kind of complex progressive bands anymore. We're going to rein it all in and just do kind of pop. Yeah, um, okay. because like on Duke, they did have a load of hit songs off it, but they were good. Yeah. And... Like the suite was split up and everything. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a prog album. No. Like the ones that they had done before. No. And okay. I do feel that it, yeah, this is the, where this it started. was the this was the turning point. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to make. Uh, I, I'm just going to comment on what you said, and then I'll make my argument, and you can comment <laughs> on what you said. So Tara, what you're saying here is, Genesis post Steve Hackett has left. <clears throat> they go into a studio very soon after, like they've done Seconds Out, Remix, got out, come back into a studio, put this thing together, um, and they've decided, right, we're going to be a different band altogether. Um, <clears throat> I, I think that's a really valid argument. If anybody has that argument out there, really valid, I think. Uh, I do think it's very valid. I remember that album. I suppose a little bit about my history with Genesis. I remember that album in the shops when I kind of got switched on to kind of music and rock music and things like that. I remember Follow You, Follow Me. I then remember uh, the stuff from Duke coming out. Uh, I remember turning it on again and hearing that and going, you know, these guys are okay, like, you know. Um, and I remember it going on from there. So, what your point is, is that, and, and yeah, I used to be terrified to buy Genesis albums mm. in case I ended up with some of the awful music that I had heard come out from them, okay? So uh, so what you're saying is they stopped here, they said, right, not a pop band. 
This is kind of, you know, they, they had a bit of proggy leanings when they went in to do this album. Uh, but they were trying to push it into that pop area as well. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fine, great, I get that. Um, very valid argument, Tara, I'd go with that. Now, my here's my reading of it, okay? And then there were three, uh, Hackett had left, they went into the studio in a hurry, they did something. Uh, I listened to this album, it lacks energy. It's completely lacking in energy. Everything's like this drudgy kind of feel to it. And then there's... Um, and and it's all muddy. It yeah. feels like it hasn't been mixed or recorded properly. Um, and um, Tony Banks is like trying, you know, to keep going on keyboards. He's changing the keyboard sound, which he did quite a lot during Genesis era. So to tell the truth, not not really a big problem with that. But it sounds like he hasn't quite got it. It's a real transitional album. Uh, I just think that is a bad album. I don't. Uh, I think the fact that Duke was the way it was showed that they still were trying to be that kind of prog band. But having said that, oh, oh, oh here we go, oh. right? Okay. So as I said, I didn't like buying Genesis albums. I didn't like the idea of going out in case I got something terrible. And then I remember, um, what was it? Uh, yeah, I, I I went to when it was I went to live in England in nineteen late eighties. I went to live in England, and I um, I met a lot of people that were really into Genesis there. And uh, somebody said to me, uh, "Try uh, nursery crime," mm. and I went in and I bought that. And mind was just completely blown. Uh, and then uh, I bought the Lamb Lies down on Broadway. I bought Fox Trap. All the old albums. Loved everyone. Like right. Then I went down to a second hand shop and I got Duke. There, there it is, that's the actual copy I got for one pound. Okay. Uh, because you couldn't give away vinyl records at the time. Yeah. This was in the 90s. So I went down and bought that one pound, uh, brought it home, put it on, and I just thought, wow, this isn't bad at all. Maybe I've got the wrong angle on what this 80s Genesis is like. And then I went back to the same second hand record shop and I bought this copy of Abacab for a pound. I have now listened to this three times. The first time was when I brought it home that day. That was probably before Tara was born even. I brought the thing home, put it on, and said, my God, that is absolute. I, I, I was going to say a bad word. <laughs> but it was like, it was like there was, as the music was playing, it had, it had the effect of if you were ever in a room and there's quite a suspicious, nauseous snail in the background and you can feel it kind of rising in your throat, hitting you in the back of the throat. Just to say. That's the effect that listening to this had on me. It was absolutely terrible. Uh, <coughs> the point I would make was at this point, they had bought the farm in Surrey. <laughs> Stop it there. Sorry. Which was, which was an idea which, to quote the nice, was pregnant with promise and anticipation. So they bought the farm in Surrey. They could go down, they could spend all the time in the world playing around with tunes and songs in the farm, take ages to develop an album. Uh, all the awful albums that they did came out of the farm in Surrey. If I could... Uh, I lived in Surrey, actually. Do you think the smell off the farm was affecting them <laughs> and they were making I up have no suffers? idea. Yeah, there must have been a bit of muck <laughs> spreading going on or something. But I, if, uh, I lived in Surrey and if I knew where the farm was, I would have gone down and set fire to it with them inside in it, actually. In the, for the memory, <laughs> for how they destroyed all the memories of what, uh, of what they did for me as, uh, as, as a young person. Uh, absolutely, at this point, they stop creating music that is meant for kind of uh, intelligent people. I'm going to put it that way. Uh, Phil Collins, I saw him on a documentary one time, he said, oh, he said, it used to be the same. He said, you'd go along to a gig and it'd be a guy in an old RAF great coat or something with a bunch of albums under his under his arm. He'd go, all right, Phil, and he'd have kind of long hair and he was off some university campus or whatever. That was the fan all the time. After we started doing this stuff, we got like, uh, uh, you know, more women in the audience and we got these kind of 
middle class people. So to me, like these albums are not made for because I was the guy with the long hair and the, and the great coat and everything like that. I've got one hanging on the door behind me. I'll, I'll insert a picture here of you <laughs> as a young fellow. Oh, please. <laughs> But anyway, anyway, yeah, so I was the guy with the long hair, the great coat and all that, and uh, I was, uh, you know, and, and that music was kind of made for a persona like me, and they stopped doing it for me, and they started making it for the aspiring uh, nouveau middle class that was emerging in the 1980s, Ford Sierra, uh, house in the suburbs somewhere uh, on a new built estate, uh, lots of, of debt and everything like that, and go off for their uh, for their uh, boil in the bag curry or whatever and then <laughs> and then go off for their their genesis experience you know uh, once a year and you know pretend that they had something there, there was a, a phrase in the 80s I don't know did it go around the world but it was in Ireland diarrhea so every every year you would either have a dire straits album that all these people would like or a Chris Rhea album that all these people would have so it became the year the era of diarrhea in music. <laughs> but they were albums created for people who were very unsophisticated and didn't really listen to music. If you've ever seen that uh, play, is it Annabelle's Party, is it, or whatever, you should look at that and you'll see the people that Genesis had in mind for this. This was not made for me. It's not my album. It's not something that I have any interest in. Anybody that likes old Genesis, I can't see how you could actually sit down and listen to this. I don't see how you could see this. And I remember uh, they were on the television one time, they were talking to Phil Collins, and it was the height of their fame, and they said to Phil Collins, uh, <clears throat> you know, you have a new album coming out. He said, yeah, we've nailed the sound we were looking for. This is it. It's going to be fabulous. Our new video is ready now, and we're, we're going to exclusively show you the new video now. And it came on, it was invisible touch. And I swear to God, I nearly threw the television out through the window. It was the most dire thing that I ever... And he was so excited about it. This was it. This was the thing that they really wanted to do. That's what they were trying to achieve. It's just music for a soundtrack for some dinner party for um, people with about as... I was going to say something as well. Okay, I'll try this one. Uh, for people about as deep as a personality as the puddle of urine that the cat would leave on the kitchen floor. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so there you go. So Tara, what do you think then? Uh, my call for it is Abba Camp because the whole methodology of how they created an album, who it was created for, what the artistic intent was had changed. Yeah. The artistic intent became a product to sell to this new burgeoning middle class uh, you know, you could leave it on the coffee table, really easy styling it, and uh, you know, people would come around. Oh, look at that! Is that the new Genesis album? Yeah, and uh, like you know, you can see it here, so looking that great, you know. Whereas Duke isn't. Yeah. Duke isn't, you know. But there you go. So yeah, what do you yeah, think? No, Sorry. I agree with you completely. Um, like I said, I feel that the pop sound did come in. And, and then there were three because it was just songs mm. like there was no epics or anything on it uh, which was something they had done quite a lot before and I know uh, Trick of the Tail and Wind and Modern didn't really have anything like Supper's Ready but it was still full of like really whimsical yeah yeah and it was kind of sweets of music and, that fitted yeah, together yeah. especially at the end of Wind and Modern I mean yeah, oh it's my god beautiful, it's fantastic like, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and then there were three that's just gone like and you know i know there is the duke suite but it's been split up i love it i think the lyrics on it are still very strong mm. but that 80s sound is is slowly weaseling its way yeah. in there oh it is yeah i mean there are songs on that that you can see are yeah. kind of uh yeah, that way inclined, mm. shall we say. But they're still kind of in that, like, concept-y mindset. Yeah, that's what I think. Um, but yeah. yeah, I agree with you. Just when Abacab came along, then it was just mm. all of us that were into all the earlier stuff can just yeah. fake yeah. off. Like. Yeah, yeah, well, that's it. That's it. Yeah. I remember I remember Phil Collins saying, too, people used to slag off Yes and ELP, and he'd go, yeah, they were all crap. And then he said, didn't they start saying the same about us? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, and where are you now? 
you know, it's all the old stuff that's been repackaged and sold and everything, and this disposable product from the 1980s. I mean, it was the era of disposability, of plastic, you know, plastic disposable razors. I think every one of them ever made is still somewhere on the planet. Mm. You know, you could make a country out of disposable razors. But it's all that cheap plastic throwaway kind of mentality, and they just grabbed it with both hands and went for it. And uh, I think they'd have been better off staying with the core of what their uh, of what their actual um, artistic endeavours were about mm. up to that point. And so. I like with Genesis fans as well that are into all that stuff as well as the earlier stuff. Anyone I've spoken to hasn't been able to explain themselves no, properly, no. and it's just like. Genesis are great, and I will die on that hill. Yeah, well, you I know? mean, there, there is a kind of brand love uh, of things, and I think that could be it. Uh, I just noticed, and even there, the kind of uh, the logos. I mean, you've got the same logo on this and that. Uh, <clears throat> and that one, the logo is kind of, yeah, I think the hypnosis guy's got at it. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, so you kind of... Um, uh, yeah, I, I think there's a brand loyalty with people. I think that's what it is. Um, yeah. There's no way I could sit down and listen to The Lamb Lies Down in Broadway and then listen to that and go, yeah, that's kind. Of, that's the same kind of artistic endeavour. No, it's not. No, totally different. It's like a different band. And that's the way I kind of re regard it. So I played it again a second time a few years ago just to see was it as bad as I had remembered. So this was about... 12 years, 15 years after I'd originally played it. And yes, it was just as bad. And then prior to this video, Tara and I sat down and we listened to it. And uh, it was absolutely, uh, it, was it was a chore yeah. going through. Uh, anybody that puts Who Done It on, a, on, a, on an album and the length of Who Done It, I keep t waiting for it to stop. Oh. Uh, you know, that would have been fine if it was just a few bears long and a little joke in there. But uh, I... Um, Anyone that puts that on an album uh, hates the people that are going to buy it because make no doubts about it, the likes of Tony Banks and Mike Rutherford, they feel nothing in common or anything with this person uh, that, they, that they've designed this product for. The person in the suburb with the Ford Sierra and the 2.4 children and the Chinos. Uh, and <laughs> and the boil in the bag cord, they feel absolutely nothing for this person other than contempt. Okay, so they made records for people that were beneath them, and they threw on who done it just to put that little, give you a little, you know. And they love that. They laugh at it. You know what they're like. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's it. Uh, we're not here to argue. If somebody like loves these things and wants to make an argument that there's some sort of great artistic um, uh, statement, uh, please don't waste my time. I won't be reading any comments like that. Um, uh, but if you want to say like which one you think was the point at which they went over the uh, waterfall, please do. And uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose that's it. Subscribe. We need subscribers. Okay, so yeah. keep driving those subscriptions up. Getting loads of subscribers need more, okay? <laughs> it, it actually motivates us to keep these videos going. And, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully we'll see you all in the next one. Yes, we will, of course. Okay, bye. bye.